When we took on this project as a family, we knew it would be a challenge in so many ways, but we couldn't have imagined all of the ups and downs we would face along the way. This week, we make huge strides forward with our plumbing and crawl space and start to open up our first doorway connecting the kitchen to our main living area, finding some surprises along the way. <laughs> Everyone needs a scorpion in their walls. Well, we are back at it, diving straight into the thick of things today, laying the piping inside of the house, as well as building up the crawl space. So we had to jackhammer up a portion of this concrete foundation to get the pipe in at the right height. Kind of figured we'd have to um, as we were pouring the concrete. I was thinking about this, but just simpler to pour the concrete with the forms we had set in place and then jackhammer it up later on. It just takes 15 minutes or so. But right now we are working to pass a tube from the bathroom upstairs down through this wall and out. And then obviously the orange pipe running down the wall will eventually get covered up. So if you remember, this is the wall that we've been having so much trouble with the water coming in. Thankfully, I would say 99% of the water that comes in is actually limited to this wall. And realistically, within the first two feet of this wall, um, which is lucky. <laughs> So what we're going to do is create an internal gutter system or French drain that then runs into this pipe and actually goes off to the wastewater so that it's not running and kind of staying underneath the floor. And then we'll also leave exposed later on a, an access point to where we can hook up a dehumidifier into this room to capture any of the excess moisture coming through and then have that um, be permanently installed to run out to the wastewater. And then finally, what we'll do is seal off this wall completely with a new wall. We'll put up plastic and then a new um, brick and then rendered wall um, in here to permanently keep out as much of that moisture as possible. Not a lot of room to work here. <laughs> doing now is building out the Vespaio, which is the crawl space. Um, it's very, I use the crawl space very uh, loosely. It's basically just a small few inches of space for air to circulate, which allows any moisture coming up through the uh, cement floor to then get dried out. Um, so what we're doing is essentially um, stacking up um, these cement blocks either side, and then you have these pieces here that connect across from it, allowing air to flow underneath. And then later on, we will pour cement over top of this entire floor, essentially creating a floating cement floor. So in previous videos, you may have heard me talk about our plan to put uh, plastic igloos underneath the crawl space, which would create that floating cement floor. That was the original plan. And to be honest, that method is a lot um, easier and um, also cheaper as well. But when I would arrive early in the morning and there was visible dew on the ground, I would notice that any plastic pieces lying around um, would collect that dew much faster than stone or bricks. That's because the uh, stone and bricks stay a little bit warmer than the plastic does. The plastic will get cold quite quickly, which lowers the condensation point 
allowing uh, the dew to condensate. So when that crawl space is open to the outside air and it's actually meant to ventilate underneath that floating concrete floor, um, I didn't want all of that moist air condensating on the plastic igloos every single morning because the whole point of the Vespio, the whole point of the crawl space is to um, eliminate the moisture from the house. And I didn't want that moist air coming in from outside condensating and actually creating a bigger problem than there was to begin with from a moisture standpoint. Um, that's just simply what I observed. So I started talking to other construction workers in the area and they agreed. Um, they don't really believe the plastic igloos are the best solution. Um, so while the method we're currently using with um, the cement blocks and the, um, I think they're called Davaloni, um, which are um, long, one, one meter long clay bricks, essentially, um, they don't collect the moisture in the same way. And it is a, a much slower process of installing it. So therefore, it means a little bit more expensive, um, but definitely an area you don't want to skip out on because this is not something you can decide to redo in the future if you have moisture problems underneath your floor. Well, another day has passed. We managed to finish up the floor in the office here. And uh, that means tomorrow we should be pouring cement to finally finish off that floor. So welcome to a very soggy and wet morning, but we have far too much work to get done to let that slow us down. So we are hanging up a tarp to continue mixing cement as we move into the office. We have finished laying the, the Vespio, the crawl space, and it's time to pour the cement over top and create that uh, floating cement floor. We're about to bring in this mesh of uh, rebar. I cannot think of the name of it currently. Then once we get our tarp set up, We'll move in and start mixing cement to pour the floor in here, which is looking quite nice. So I think under normal circumstances, it would be appropriate to be a little annoyed by the weather holding us back a little bit, but I for one am actually quite grateful for it because not only is it gonna be raining nonstop all day tomorrow, but for the next two days, I'm actually hoping the weather will give us its worst and we'll just keep pouring and pouring and pouring so that we can see firsthand the effects of that rain as the water soaks down through the mountain, through the back walls and into the house so that we can properly assess and see what we're dealing with to make sure that the mitigation approach that we are planning is adequate to control the moisture coming in. We currently believe it is, but I would like to see all of that rain come all at once in order to properly assess it. So just as we're getting ready to pour cement in here, we're looking around and looked into a corner and we found a fire salamander, which are um, pretty unique to Europe, I think. Maybe North Africa, I can't remember. It's a fire salamander, which are, um, I believe the largest salamander out there. I thought it was a snake when I first saw it. It's got these bright yellow spots that actually uh, kind of, not really glow in the dark, but if you're driving by with headlights, they'll actually kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Reflect the lights quite brightly and they shine in the dark. Um, they're also, if I remember correctly, poisonous um, to the touch. So I'm just gonna leave them there. But they are massive. And this is the biggest one I have ever seen. He's all coiled up right now. It's so, it's hard to see how big he is. Good morning. <laughs> He's sleeping. Wow. He is huge. 
Non la mettiamo! No, no, no! No, 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 no! Goodbye! Uh, bye bye! Yeah! Look how big he is! Oh. So you'll have to let me know who you think did it better, Carlo or Heather and the kids at floating the concrete floor. I know it's a little confusing because we already poured a concrete floor in this room, um, but that's just how they do things here. They do layers on layers of concrete. So the first concrete floor was just to make the floor flat and smooth and to have a concrete surface. Then we obviously just now built the crawl space and poured the floating concrete floor. Now that this um, floating concrete floor is placed, we can bring in the insulation, bring in all of the supply lines for our plumbing, run all the electrical, um, and then we'll actually pour a, a small concrete floor um, after that as well. But after watching Carlo work today, who has 30 years of experience, I am quite proud of Heather and the kids. Uh, because that was our first uh, experience ever 
of pouring a concrete floor. And I would say we, we got about nine tenths of the way there in terms of quality that um, Carlo just smoothed out. So I'm proud of us. So when I said that I hoped that the weather would give us its worst, this is why. Because over here in this wall, I'm currently in the kitchen, we almost never have a drop of water come through. And for whatever reason now, it's now pouring through, dripping through, way before any of the other rooms are experiencing any water intrusion. And I'm so thankful for that. It's the first time I've ever seen it happen here. We weren't planning to do much intervention here um, in terms of a French drain or anything like that because we didn't feel like it was necessary since after a year of working here, we haven't seen anything. But now, changing course, we're doing a French drain in the entire house. So I am off to buy some pipes. I am super thankful, very grateful for the team that I'm working with today because uh, most people that would have really annoyed making a last minute plan like that because they were in the process of laying in and cementing in the bricks uh, that hold up that floating floor. Uh, so they actually had to take things out, redo a few things and wait for me to get back with a few pipe fittings. But man, it's better to do this now and to know that everything is secure long-term in the future because you're not ripping that floor up again. So either you deal with it now or it's uh, stuck like that forever. So our car is being fixed after the accident and I have this hilarious tiny little Fiat Panda uh, that feels more like driving a golf cart than anything. <laughs> literally about half the length of our SUV and uh, quite a bit narrower so it feels like driving a golf cart sorry which I think is hilarious our car should be back to normal in about a week's time Okay, went to the local hardware store. We have a Braga, which I do not remember the name in English, and a bunch of 45s, and that should do it for today. So just like we did in the first room, we're adding that pipe now and that French drain to collect any water coming out of the wall, and it will then feed directly into the sewer. Um, the reason that's okay is because one will have a siphon at um, one end of the sewer line, so no fumes will come back in. And then secondly, we will be building a new wall on the inside of this room, a very short distance from the pre-existing wall that will act as the new external wall. It of course is very confusing because now you have two external walls. The two foot thick stone wall is technically the external wall, but since the water is intruding, we will be building a smaller wall out of bricks. Um, we have to cover up that wall anyways. There's, there's actually not an option for us from a thermal technical perspective. Um, so since we have to build a new wall anyways, um, we're just building it out a little bit further in order to um, create a French, an internal French drain that drains out to the sewer line, um, which should capture, I would say, 99 plus percent of all of the water coming in, um, if not completely all of it. So to give you a visual representation, this will be the internal French drain along this wall here. And then um, the pipe that they're putting in right now right there will actually drain and connect with the sewer line that will lead up to the toilet later on. And then this will drain underneath the floor here and out through that hole that we made a long time ago. Well, it's another very wet and soggy day today. Carlo and Alessio are now working on pouring the cement in the middle room. And I'm in charge of prepping this room, which means cutting open this threshold. The rest of the house have um, very beautiful stone thresholds, except for this one. Um, there's a very large um, slope that goes down that we need to eliminate. And we have um, extremely beautiful stones lying around um, the property. 
that have been already been shaped into the proper uh, shape and size for a threshold. So we're simply going to swap it out. Um, it also serves the purpose of adding in air underneath um, the crawl space, which is required to, to have. Preferisci il big crack? Well, there we go. We have the uh, start of a door opening. <laughs> That was actually an old door um, that was covered in later on, and we've just opened it back up, but we're going to go a lot further in order to create a large arced doorway. <laughs> majority of these stones have been hand shaped beautifully and obviously have a lot of history to them so we're not going to just throw them into the rock pile from the other stones. We're going to set them aside and use them as we build the new room, the new wall. So it's nice to be able to take uh, some of the history that was inside of this house both on the kitchen side and on the entry side over there and repurpose it into the exterior of the house. Oh, rato. Wow. Rato. Yeah. That's disgusting. So we've been able to kind of ruthlessly tear into this first part of the door without anything supporting the ceiling or anything like that because this was actually an old door. Um, so there is built-in support that they've simply covered up. Um, so we've gone ahead and kind of ripped open into it just to be able to get a better look and see how it was supported, um, how the stones are stacked, and what the plan is moving forward.
getting the first uh, preview of what it's gonna be like walking through our doorway from the kitchen to the entryway. I really wish Heather was here right now to see this. I had no idea that they were gonna be beginning to do this today. I don't think they realized that they were gonna do this today. They just had an extra hour before the end of the day and the rain was stopping us from doing some outside things. So, hey, why not open up a doorway? <laughs> What is it? Oh yeah, it's a scorpion. Woohoo! <laughs> Everyone needs a scorpion in their walls. Yeah. <laughs> that always surprises me, but I am getting used to it. We have a lot of scorpions here. It's quite, quite strange to uh, see scorpions here. We are so far in the north and it's very cold as my stupid looking hat kind of tells you it's cold. Um, but yeah. We get a lot of scorpions. It's very strange to live inside of the walls. All right, so we're gonna leave the door like this for the next week, actually. Um, I think it was a situation where, hey, there's two hours left in the day. Let's, let's make a big hole in the wall. <laughs> no, it's actually because we have to first make the hole, inspect what's there to then make a plan. And actually, before we finish widening this door here, we actually first have to open up a door upstairs. We're actually gonna be making a um, more or less two-story large opening. Uh, that's just how you have to build this. You first make a two-story opening, and then you rebuild from the ground up. Up there, there's a door to a bedroom currently, but the engineer is requiring us to move it over a little bit. And because of that, we basically have to, let's see if I can see it, from here all the way up to the second story, open up the wall completely 100%, and then rebuild it from the ground up. Now, once we get to the point of actually rebuilding this, this will be extremely exciting because we're gonna be doing a large, arched doorway um, very much like the existing windows here if you can see that we have arched windows throughout the entire house so we're going to be mimicking that and building in a arched doorway here but starting next week we're going to be working on something else and we need to bring in some supplies for the larger door first um, so we're going to save the rest of the door for a future video It's a little dark to see, okay. but come on in. Come in. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whoa. <laughs> Bit of a hole oh there where there goodness. wasn't before. <gasps> oh, that's so exciting. Come, come stand I here. I can see the fireplace from right here. Actually, let me go open the doors over oh there. Oh my gosh. So standing in the kitchen now, you can actually <laughs> see all the way through, see the light Whoa. coming through. Oh my goodness. But I mean, imagine where it's this like line house. is. That's where <laughs> the door opening is gonna be. There. So wow. me standing here, this is the kitchen island. So you can yep. see oh, a lot of the a lot of the light coming through and look all the way into even see a bit of the fireplace. That's pretty amazing. Kind of a game that changer. Feels, what? Kind of a game changer. Yeah, that feels it's like a house. Like it doesn't feel like a barn anymore. I know that doesn't seem like <laughs> it's a small change. Um, but just to be able to see the fireplace from from here, it's like, oh wow, I can picture it so much better how the whole house is gonna But then flow. also picture an arch here. Yeah, that's gonna be just gorgeous. It's gonna be incredible. That's gonna be incredible. Wow. Heather is back. I'm back. <laughs> Where have you been? 
Oh my goodness, I have been back with my family in the United States for the last couple weeks and I'm very happy to be back. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for all of the love and support and prayers that um, you guys have just poured out on me and my family. I, I'm just so appreciative of all of that. Um, my dad is doing okay. Um, he is in really good spirits. His prognosis is good, um, but it's going to be, you know, a battle ahead. So I do appreciate your continued, um, prayers and good vibes and all of that. Um, I really appreciate it, but I am really happy to be back here and ready to get to work. Heather's missed a lot. <laughs> There's a been lot. a lot going on. The, the pace has picked up, um, quite dramatically as we knew it would. Um, and it's it's really kind of lifted both of our mm -hmm. spirits how fast things have been moving and how fast they will continue to move. Just walking in and seeing the room opened from the kitchen into the living area is kind of mind blowing to me. That's one of the first things that I pictured when we came to the house to look to see if we wanted to buy it. It's like I can picture it in my mind, you know, what it will look like, but to see it in reality was so encouraging. And I know that there's just going to be so many more things like that that keep happening to remind us we are moving forward now. And that is so, so exciting. But it's it's nothing compared to, <laughs> as I'm thinking about what's coming, I know. compared to the room that we're going to build, the, the method of how we're building it. Um, the uh, the wood lintels over the doorway it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. stunning mm -hmm. and we start on that next week so thank you guys so much as always for supporting us and and watching this video we appreciate you so much and we'll see you next week